The over-the-air updates for Marvel Snap on May 11th are now live. We're going to quickly talk about them, give you a quick breakdown, and there's a couple surprises in here, including changes to locations, which I had not even thought was possible with the over-the-air updates, but here we are, and these changes are really good, so let's jump right in. So we got four card updates. Uh, first of all, we have Drax. Drax is getting a buff. Uh, prior, Drax was a 4-5. They got a plus 3 power if you landed the Guardian's effect. Now it's a 4-6 that gets plus 2, so if you miss the Drax-based effect, um, you know, you have a better card, but if you land it, you know, you still get the steam amount. So basically, it's a little more consistent. You're at a 4-6 minimum, which is really nice against that White Queen stat line, the Iron Lad stat line. Um, and uh, that makes a lot of sense, honestly. Uh, it kind of reduces his ceiling. Like, it would have been still interesting if, like, he still maintained that plus 3. But that might have been a little OP. But anyways, I digress. I do think that, uh, that Drax is uh, still going to need some testing to see if he's that good. We're getting these Guardian-style decks kind of uh, starting to emerge in the meta, considering that Nebula has uh, been a very successful card. Obviously, people really like Nebula. It's a really good card, so any, any Guardian buff is a direct buff to Nebula because of that ability to bait plays in. So, the change to Drax... Makes a lot of sense. Let's talk about Rock Slide. So we got Rock Slide here going from a 4 6 that shuffles two rocks into your opponent's deck to a 4 5. Now, this makes sense. I, I totally understand why this change was being made. Rock Slide was one of the only cards that never saw play almost ever during beta. And then what happened was, is once the inclusion of uh, Dark Hawk was kind of inserted into the game, Suddenly, Rock Slide saw a lot of play. Then when you have the Zabu effect as well, it's completely insane. And Zabu um, and uh, really activates Rock Slide, especially when you play them on turn three, which really disrupts your opponent because they're drawing those rocks nearly every time, right? So it's pretty damn impactful. So it does make sense to take a little bit off the uh, the top of uh, Rock Slide. It, honestly, I didn't expect Rock Slide to get... Uh, nerfed here but it, it does kind of make a lot of sense considering the overall strength of the zabu and dark hawk package well i think it's not really kind of like you're not going to see dark hawk go to a negative one i think because that can nearly you know it, i don't know it can be a buff in some ways if you want to dodge priority and things like that in a location so um i do like the change here you're trying to kind of take down the zabu and dark hawk synergy without attacking those two cards specifically because you're, you're losing wiggle room with zabu right it's a two cost that reduces the cost by one like you make it two one now right like what do you what do you actually do so I think they're running out of options, and I think this makes a lot of sense. With Enchantress now, I really like what this, this does here, okay? So the Enchantress change here, going from a 4-6 to a 4-5, I like this because it shows the Marvel Snaps team's willingness to make rapid changes. And because, like, Enchantress was just buffed to a 4-6. It was a 4-4, went to 4-6, and now it's literally everywhere. So they said, you know what? We maybe did a little too high here, so let's bring it down by one. I like this. I like that they're doing this. Do this more. Experiment. If a card goes to a 4-6 and it becomes a little too prevalent, tone it down. We'd rather you see take, like, we'd rather you kind of take chances and have fun with your ability to balance within reason, of course. Don't make, you know, enchantress a 420 or something like that. Uh, I mean, that, that, was an, that was an accidental joke. I didn't actually mean that as a 420 joke. But anyways, I do like what they're doing here. Enchantress going to a 4-5. I thought it was okay as a 4-6, honestly. I'm surprised it got brought down. But as you can say, it was fun while it lasted. This is the most exciting change thus far. Venom. Venom going from a 3-1 to a 3-3. This is a big change. Like, Destroy Archetypes um, are seeing some play. Like, you're seeing the Death Wave style gameplay. I think that you're seeing, um, you know, obviously Null is being played in Galactus. But I think what this does is it opens up a landscape for, like, Null, Taskmaster, and, like, much more traditional style Destroy Venom-based lists. So I'm definitely going to be experimenting with this, and we're going to be definitely releasing a video on Venom soon, maybe in the next couple days, because I think that this is really fascinating. I think Venom's a card that's kind of been forgotten to some extent, and um, I'm going to look forward to actually giving a shot, because, like, the Venom-Arnim-Zola uh, combination, that's some classic beta stuff. So it's good to see it coming back. Now... This was what was really surprising to me. Um, I had no idea that the over-the-air updates were going to include changes to locations, and here we are, location changes. And um, I'm glad that they made these uh, these changes because, like, these are universally hated locations for the most part. We have uh, at Atilian. I always say Atilian, but obviously I'm adding an extra I in there. Whatever it is, Krakoa, Lunjingilla, which I'm obviously saying incorrectly as well. Morag, Plunder Castle, Sanctum Sanctorum, and Subterranea. I like this change. I like the fact they're taking these. Uh, the there's a reduction in the likelihood that we're going to see them because these are kind of like the least fun locations. Specifically, I think Krakoa, Atilian, um, Plunder Castle, Sanctorum. I'm not 
too disturbed by because, like, honestly, I play a ton of Jeff, right? So when I see Sanctorum, I honestly, it's, like, free real estate to some extent. I play a lot of Jeff. I play, I play a lot of, like, Ramp with, like, uh, Dr. Doom and Odin. So, like, Sanctorum never really bothers me. Subterranean is annoying, uh, honestly. The one that I don't like here is uh, Lunjangilla or whatever this is. I actually like this location because, unlike Subterranea, it is a location that gives you agency as to how many rocks you stuff in your list. And when I'm playing a Darkhawk based list, I'll actually hide my Darkhawk synergy to have, like bait my opponent to play into that location on like turn six and just ramping my Darkhawk up way beyond what they would have originally thought, right? So I actually thought that this one here wasn't as problematic as the others. Morag is pretty annoying. Uh, Plunder Castle is kind of annoying. Atillion. Even Atillion is really, it's annoying, but it's not like disruptive that much, right? It still sucks, but... I do think that uh, these location changes are interesting. I'm glad that they're doing this. I'm glad that they're doing this. And um, there is a full size patch coming next week, which is pretty wild. So there's going to be big changes to Marvel Snap coming next week, which is really exciting, right? Anytime you have a monthly change, you know, it's uh, it's always a good time to be a Marvel Snap player, guys. If you like to support the series, press the like button. Really appreciate your support. And I got another video for you down below if you'd like to see some stuff. These are actually decks that I took to Infinite this season. So if you're interested in, in uh, seeing some of those decks, I got you covered. We'll see you in the next one.